So in today's lesson, I'm going to talk about the Veeam replication job. So first off, I want you to take a look at my first video, which is introduction to Veeam replication job. And then I'm going to uh, perform the task of replication in this Veeam lab. So let's get started by introduction to replication job. Vim replication is like continuous data protection with VSS. It's near a CDP and helps us to reduce costs. And also will help you to bring up your virtual machine from a replica. Not only in disaster, again, whenever it's needed, we can power on our virtual machine from a replica and it doesn't need any application to be installed on the target virtual machine. The replication process is agentless and it doesn't have any agent to be installed on the target machine. Beam replication will operate on our virtualization layer and it will use an image base for replicating our virtual machines. Beam on-site replication can be used for high availability. In some cases, it's like high availability in the virtualization layer. Veeam offsite replication can be used for disaster recovery and it's a great option for transferring our virtualization server to another location. To prevent overutilization, we can use the VAN accelerator to optimize our network bandwidth utilization between two sites. When Veeam replication takes place, a snapshot or checkpoint is going to be deleted. And lastly, let's check out a diagram for Veeam on-site replication and off-site replication. Here is on-site Veeam replication. And here is the repository and these are the virtual machines. So by using Veeam data mover in source host, we can transfer the VMs with Veeam data mover. And of course to a target host. This is the actual process in on-host Veeam replication. The second method is using Veeam backup replication to another site or disaster site. So again, with on-host backup proxy, we can transfer a virtual machine by using Veeam data mover throughout the VAN connection. And of course, here we'll have Veeam VAN accelerator. And by using Veeam data mover target and off-host backup proxy, we can move this virtual machine to the target host. This is how Veeam off-host replication works in a real environment. So now that you know what is replication and how it works, now is the time to do the task of replication in our Veeam lab. So here I'm going to say maximum size, and this is our Veeam backup and replication. Here, by going to the inventory and the virtual machines, you can right click and say add to the replication job. Or of course, you can go again to home and say replication job to the virtual machine. So that's great. Let's say replicate MicroTik or whatever. You can add one virtual machine or a few virtual machines to a single replication job. And here is three options for a disaster site here. As you can see, these two options. Replica seeding for low bandwidth DR site. And again, we have network remapping for a DR site here, which as you can see, when you select this option, we have network option. That means we can change the actual IP to the new IP when our virtual machine transfers to another location, which is our disaster site. Let's say that we have another site or disaster site and we want to replicate our virtual machines from original site to the disaster site. Of course, in disaster site, maybe you have another range of IP addresses. Here you can say the original IP address of this MicroTik is going to be changed when using this option. So that's great. And this is the replica pre-IP, as you can see, 
This is for IP address and this is for virtual network. So that's great. And if this replication job is going to be your high replicated uh, priority job, you should select this option. And we're gonna say next and here, we'll select the virtual machine. By the way, here you can do a search, for example, MicroT or whatever. And you can select it here. And we're gonna click on next. And here we should define the destination of our virtual machine. Here, now we can see our virtual machine, which is MicroTIG, is hosted on 10 to ESXi. We want to transfer it to the 10.1. So, of course, here the destination is going to be 10.1 ESXi host. That's great. And this is the source you can change and the VM folder. And here, of course, you can change what data store that you want to move on on that ESXi host. Of course, we have the default, which is going to be data store one and data store ESXi is zero one. That's great. These two data stores. And for your production environment, if you don't use VM encryption policy, you shouldn't use this data stores that under VM encryption policy. So that's great. Let's say, for example, to this one, data store two, and we'll say next. Here you can specify repository for replica metadata. This is only metadata like Veeam job, as I said, uh, like configuration for taking backup. Let's say when Veeam backup tasks like replications or taking backup wants to start, they will use this metadata. As you can see here, we have the metadata for our job. Let me show you. Without this metadata, if you delete it, you cannot perform backup anymore. So that means the task of replication and um, taking backup, it will need the metadata file. That's great. Here it says store the replica metadata to the default repository. So you can select whatever repository that you have. And here is the replica name suffix. That means when you replica that virtual machine, you will have underscore replica to your virtual machine. And here is the restore point to keep, which in most cases will use seven or let's say five or things like that. Here is the advanced, you can configure notification here, send an email and things like that. If you wanna know how to configure advanced setting of uh, Veeam Backup, you should check out my Veeam Backup and Replication course, Zero to Hero, which is great and high rated course. So. And here we're going to say next. So this is the data transfer. It will use the default, which is our Veeam backup proxy server. The source and target are going to be the same. Because we don't have that heavy, massive virtualization environment, we will use the default Veeam proxy, which is already installed when you install Veeam backup and replication for the first time. So, and here you can specify the van acceleration. So let's say direct and next. And here, of course, you can again enable application aware processing. We don't need it and we'll say next. And of course, here we can say, run the job automatically at this time or periodically for example every one hour so in most cases for replication we'll use this option because we want to immediately transfer all the settings or all the changes in our virtual machine to another site this is a great example if you have a very important virtual machine in your environment maybe you will use one minute or something like five minutes every five minutes any changes in your entire virtual machine, something like your SQL server, your Oracle, your whatever application inside it, it will transfer to the replicated virtual machine. So that's great. Let's say, for example, one hour. And of course, here you can say not to take replication on this time or things like that. And this is the retry failure and wait before each retry attempts for 10 minutes which is the default option and of course you can terminate it when you reach for example the time work or i don't know time job or things like that and we're gonna say apply 
and we'll click on run the job when I click finish here you can see the replication virtual machine of our microtik it's going to be a start so let's say what will happen and in the meanwhile if you go to the uh, I mean VMware vSphere here you can see the recent task for that replication so first off the job it will start to build the list of virtual process and is going to calculate the size of the disk of that virtual machine and is going to start a replication here we'll go back now as you can see reconfigure virtual machine taking a snapshot and again reconfigure and create a snapshot of that virtual machine this is all it's done by the uh, Vim backup and our application. Now, as you can see, we have a microtik replica job here. Reconfigure the virtual machine, copy the disks from original location, which is microtik to the transferred replicated virtual machine to another ESXi or your, uh, I should say, disaster recovery site so and here we will wait for the disks to be transferred to our replicated virtual machine so that's great here as you can see the speed and the duration process rate and of course we will have success one there is no warning and error and these are the rest of information that you can see Again, we'll go back to our vSphere. Now, as you can see, create virtual machine a snapshot was completed successfully for this virtual machine. So let's wait to this job. So that's great. It's success. We should wait for 100%. And then we're going to start that virtual machine. So that's great. And here in our repository, we can see that we have replication metadata file here this is only metadata file as you can see it's only two megabytes so that means all the disks and configuration it will automatically transfer to the another esxi and it's going to replicate all the disks there is no need to copy that virtual disks to our vim backup like our Vim jobs here because we want to take backup but this time we want to replicate obviously when you want to replicate you want to transfer the entire virtual disk is from the source host to the destination host so that's great so this is how replication works and simply we can power off the original one and turn on the no virtual machine but in your production environment let's say that uh, this esxi i mean 10.2 is no longer available in the network for hardware failure or things like that you can easily use uh, the transferred uh, virtual machine by replication job and start it immediately that means why it is important to use uh, the continuous replication between your virtual machines for example let's say five minutes or ten minutes specifically between your very important virtual machine in your production network so that's great and here now we can see the virtual machine is work properly and it will transfer to the new ip address but the original one it was on 10.2 our esx side so that's good so i hope that enjoyed this video if you want to know more about replication i highly recommend you check out my website which is servertools.com and vim availability and here we have the great vim backup zero to hero which is i should say very complete and great course that you can master Veeam backup and replication. And again, I highly recommend you like the video, uh, comment below if you have any questions, I will answer to your question immediately.